Okay, let's uh, do examples here uh, for another retaining wall design to, uh, for parcel reset tree the soils, uh, which means we have a groundwater tables located in between the top, uh, the top grade, uh, level grade uh, of the of the systems, and also at the base at the retaining wall, uh, we have a groundwater water table there, uh, and we want to find the resulting force uh, P naught. Uh, from the uh, soils and water uh, behind our structure and also the locations of uh, the resulting force. So uh, we recommend that we start with uh, considering uh, there's two types of materials here, uh, the dry and saturated soil. Uh, we need to find the horizontal stress at each uh, type of soil, so the bottom of, of, the, of the layer. Uh, so the first one will be at the bottom uh, uh, of the uh, or the top of the groundwater tables, the bottom of the dry soils. So we need to find the horizontal effective stress at that point. And also uh, similarly, uh, the effective horizontal stress uh, at the bottom of the other type of materials, which in this case is the base uh, of the systems. And then we draw corresponding uh, stress diagram. We will talk about uh, each type of materials, what are the corresponding stress diagrams. And knowing the stress diagrams, which means we find the area of the diagram that corresponding to the force of that particular uh, uh, materials acting to the wall. So we have the soils, we have the water, and then uh, after that we find the resultants, uh, we can locate uh, the locations of the resulting force so that's the ultimate okay so here is examples uh, where we have a uniform soil site uh, we know the unit weight of the soils uh, 19 kilonewton per meter crib uh, with a friction angles of 35 degrees um, unit weight of water is standard um, and the Water table in this case is located three meters uh, from the top grade and seven meter uh, from the base of the sh uh, retaining structure. Uh, and again, like we try to find the uh, resulting force uh, from the water and soil uh, mass behind the wall, uh, the uh, resulting force and also the locations of such force. So first thing uh, we would find the uh, the stresses from the first layer. Remember that, like you know, we have two two type of material right here. Above the water tables are the dry soil, uh, and we want to find out the horizontal stress, horizontal effective stress at the bottom of the first layer, which is uh, in this case the interface uh, of the water table, three meters uh, from the top. So first we find the uh, vertical stress, the total vertical stress first. Uh, and uh, since there's no water, so the water pressure is uh, zero, and uh, the effective stress will be the same as the total stress. Um, then we can find the uh, K naught, assuming this is a normally consolidated soil. So the K naught, we can find uh, use the uh, correlations one minus sine phi right here. We got the K naught, and uh, with that, then we can, now we also can find the horizontal stress, uh, the effective horizontal stress equals to K naught times the vertical stress. So we got about 24 kilopascals uh, horizontal stress uh, at the bottom of the first layer. So similarly, we would do uh, what uh, uh, we have done uh, for the second layer. So second layer uh, consists of um, the water tables to the base. So we have seven meter of soil right there. So we find the total vertical stress first for the seven meters of, of the materials. Uh, now we have a water tables. So we find this stress at this point. So this is where we try to find uh, the horizontal effective stress we get to there. And uh, we talk about it. We just finished finding the uh, vertical uh, stress at that point such that we can find the horizontal stress from the first layers. So now here again, uh, we are on missions to find the effective horizontal stress for the second layer. So we talk about how to find the uh, uh, the vertical stress and also the water pressure. 
and then like a defective stress will be uh, the total stress minus the pore pressure. So in this case, since we have a water pressure, so the effective stress will be different than the total stress. So the uh, water effective stress at the base because of the seven meter, not like the entire uh, 10 meters, we just we break down into two sub layers. So we focus on the second layers at this point and the effective stress uh, for seven meter of soil right there is 64 kilopascals. And we also uh, have the same K-naught, same materials for normally consolidated stress, which so is not overly consolidated. So uh, for normally consolidated uh, cal uh, K-naught calculations, it's not depth dependence. So that's why we have the same K-naught for the first and uh, for the first and the second layer. So with that, we know the uh, vertical stress, and also we know the K-naught. Then we can find the horizontal stress at that point which is uh, 24 kilopascals. So those horizontal stress are very important for us to find the uh, uh, re resulting force uh, for uh, corresponding layers to the retaining structure. So uh, the horizontal stress is always very important in uh, retaining wall design. So uh, now we are ready to break it down into different uh, triangles uh, because uh, we need the triangles uh, to find the uh, uh, the resulting force again like the key concept here is uh, the resulting force pretty much is the area of the uh, stress diagram and uh, for our stress diagrams um, uh, the the base of the triangles is the horizontal stress so that's why it's important to find the horizontal stress uh, so the first uh, triangle here we call it P1, which is the uh, uh, from the first layer. So P1 is corresponding to the force uh, from the first layer, the dry soil layers to the structure. And we know the base here is the horizontal stress and the height is the uh, dimensions of the, uh, the, uh, of the, uh, of the layers, so the thickness of the layers, uh, which are three meters. So that's why this uh, triangle here is equals to the area of the triangle is one half the base, which is uh, the 24 kilopascals that we just calculate for the uh, effective horizontal stress from the first layer, and then times the height, which is three meters. So we know the force. So this is a force, kilo newton per meter. Uh, so this is, um, uh, two dimensional calculations from a 3D uh, per unit length. So that's why it's a uh, kilo newtons per meter. The meter is uh, the dimensions in and out of the, the, uh, the page. Uh, uh, so that's why this is a uh, 2D calc uh, analysis, uh, but we are dealing with 3D problems. And the per meters again is uh, the unit length per uh, into and out of the, uh, the paper. Uh, that you're working on. So um, this is the resulting force, again, P1s from the first layers uh, of soil, the dry soils into the wall. And uh, the second layers here now, um, yes, a second like uh, stress diagrams that we're doing here now is this rectangle. So pretty much is the, uh, the horizontal stress uh, you have from the first layer um, from the soil mass from the first layers to the uh, the, the second uh, portions of the retaining wall, which is the seven meter. So we, we know at this interface right here uh, between the first and second layers, uh, we have the horizontal stress acting on it. Um, so that gives you the uh, width of this rectangles and the height of the rectangles corresponding to, again, the second layers, uh, the seven meter. And this is uh, rectangles. So this is talking about the force again at this point from the top to the bottom. It's a constant force adding on the uh, second portions of your retaining structure. So that's why you still have these horizontal stress, uh, effective horizontal stress right there, and then times the uh, vertical dimensions of the second layers. So that gives you the P2. So uh, we just find the P1 right here. And then this is the P2 that we are calculating.
So we finish um, these these the, the force from the top layer. Now we move on to look at the force from the second layer. So this is the P three. So P three where it come from is the stress um, from the uh, second layers um, on these uh, lower portions of the retaining structure. So uh, this is a triangles because the force again. This we talk about the um, the soil mass on the second layers only. So that's why uh, the soil mass uh, of the second layer at the interface right here is zero. But you know you got like you know uh, the whole uh, strength, uh, whole like a loading strength at the bottoms. So uh, again, this is a triangle. So it's one half the base. And uh, this is again the key concept of stress diagrams. So whenever you have stress diagrams, it's handy, it's helpful because the base um, of your uh, stress diagrams is always the um, horizontal stress. So that's why we focus on finding the horizontal stress at the beginning. And this is the second layer is horizontal stress. So we got the sigma h t right there. We calculated at the beginning. So it's one half the bottom stress times the dimensions of the second layers, which is the seven meters. So it's a triangles. So it's a tri triangular area. So one half base, uh, the horizontal stress again, and then times the height. So uh, we got ninety six. We got ninety six uh, kilonewtons per meter for this uh, triangular force. Again, this is the uh, the second layer's soil mass acting on the uh, the uh, lower portions of the retaining structure. So last but not least, uh, the last components that we need to deal with uh, for saturated uh, soil is uh, now you we have the water force. Now we have the water force. Um, so water force is a bit tricky now because uh, uh, because the base here is no longer just the uh, horizontal stress. That's the base here now for this uh, water uh, stress diagram. Here is the water pressure. And we calculated the water pressure uh, at the beginning. So we know the water pressure is right here. And uh, we use it for our uh, stress diagram calculations right there. Then we can f use this like a U sub 2. Uh, and then like uh, that's the base of the stress diagrams and then times the height of your uh, second portions of your uh, retaining structure and that gives you the stress diagram for the water force acting on the retaining structure so uh, retain, uh, retaining water design and water is always the key because uh, with the understanding that water provide that extra pressure to your structure so uh, water is always is always something like you know you can you want to, you need to keep an eyes on uh, uh, at the first hand if you can get rid of it get rid of the water if not like you know uh, you need to account for the force uh, from the water pressure which is uh, the water tables uh, you can find the water tables and you can estimate like how much like water pressure acting in additional to the soil acting to the uh, the retaining structure. So those are the four stress diagrams uh, we need to encounter for uh, this type of scenario where we have a partially saturated uni uniform soil mass behind the retaining wall. So um, after we calculate, we have uh, find the four uh, resulting force from the four components that we talk about. The the total amount of uh, resulting force will be the summations of uh, the four. So in this case, it's uh, about four, 543 kilo newtons per meter acting on the wall. So we know this is the resulting force that acting on it. Uh, again, like, you know, the key here is getting the stress diagram uh, right. And uh, uh, also with that, you need to understand like, you know, uh, when we draw the stress diagrams, uh, how to find the base. Um, so that would be the key. So the base that uh, we mentioned about would be the horizontal stress uh, for the soil mass. And for waterfalls, uh, the base of the stress diagram will be the water pressure at the locations that you're looking at. So we find there's the piece of knot right here. And then next we'll be uh, uh, finding the uh, locations. And we can do it uh, for taking moment at the base right there. 
So we know we have the four forces that we talk about, the P1, uh, P2, that acting on, and same as the P3 and P4, that we get acting on the, uh, the wall. And um, we have to, uh, we have to do the uh, stress diagram, so that should be handy. So we know that P1 is, uh, uh, is at the locations at one third of the triangles that we talked about previously. So, uh, we know this, this, this dimensions right here. Uh, you can call it to the Z1. Same as like, uh, the P2 right here, the Z2. And, um, when you have a triangular, uh, triangle, uh, triangle, we find to find the center of the triangles is always one third from the base. So in this case, uh, Z1 here, uh, will be, uh, one meter above the, uh, the bottom, uh, which is the water interface. So here is the, uh, the, uh, we take the moment at the base. So we have a seven meter right here at the uh, water interface. And, um, the triangle here again, given us is one third of this, uh, uh, dimensions. So that's how we find the Z1 right here. So we call this to be Z1. So Z1 is at the locations of the resulting of P1 all the way from uh, where we take the moment. So the same thing, like, you know, we need to find the Z2. So we take the moment is the force and then times the moment arm. Um, so Z2 is the moment arm corresponding to the second force. And remember the second force, the second uh, stress diagram is uh, rectangles and the center of mass of the rectangles would be a uh, half of the height. So this one, it will be obvious that this is like a 3.5 meter, half of the seven meters. And um, for the resulting force of P3 and P4, since uh, this is the triangles right there, uh, acting, uh, at the base. So, uh, the, uh, moment arm, which is the center of mass of the triangles in this case is one third of the seven meters because it's triangles. So one third of the height. So that's the one third of the height. So that's how we got the, uh, Z3 and other Z4, the moment, the moment arm of the corresponding, uh, stress diagrams. So we have the force times the moment arms for each case. We have four of them. Uh, so, uh, we add them up and then divide up by the resulting force. That would give us the locations of the uh, resulting force. So in this case, the P naught. So the resulting force is acting on about like a 3.1 meters above uh, the uh, the base of our retaining structure with uh, uh, resulting force magnitudes of uh, about 543 uh, kilonewtons uh, per meters. So thank you very much for attention today. Uh, I finished the examples. Uh, if you like uh, example like this, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channels. And uh, uh, whenever when I have a chance, I will put more examples uh, for the preparations of 